Yo, yo, yo! What's going on, Lockaholics? Thanks for joining me in Matt's Lockpit. It's another fucking good day in the Lockpit today, guys. I'll show you exactly why now. So I've only gone and got my hands on another motherfucking custom pick. As we can see, it's from the awesome Phil Dixon. It says Black Gem on it. So first things first, massive, massive thank you to Phil Dixon. We all know how much I love my fucking custom picks. It's lovely to get another one to add to the collection. If anyone hasn't checked out Phil, there will be a link to his channel in the description of this video. Make sure you get on over there. So enough chatting, let's have a look at this Black Gem. So we've got a little sneak peek of the profile there already. Let's pull this out. And that's why she's called Black Gem. Because she is a black beauty. So the handle is made out of pier specs. Not something I've ever used myself. But it seems to be really comfortable. Phil's got an amazing finish on this. What I think we can do guys. We can have a little slideshow. Have a good look at this pick. And then we'll put it up against the lock. And see how it does. So there we go, as we can see we've got a Yale rim cylinder in the vise, good old traditional Yale. So it's quite an adequate test for a new pick, I need to pick a lot of these due to lockout situations. We've got quite a funky bitten on the key there. As we can imagine, works absolutely perfectly, smooth as silk, and it's all locked up. So let's get to picking, let's see what this beautiful black gem from Phil Dixon can do. First things first, we're going to need some tension on the go, there we go, so you can see we've got a good bit of slop in this core. So, let's get in there with this black gem. As always, I'm starting off at the back, working my way forward, searching for binding pins. So there we go, tension on. So we're on five, which is springy. Four, just tapped four, and it seems to have set straight away. Nothing on three. A little bit of counter on two. I think we've got two set. One's binding, a little click on one. So let's see if we can squeeze underneath this number four. There we go, five now, five's binding. We've got five set, one set that time. So let's have a feel through here. Right, five seems to be binding again, so got the open off five. Cool. So there we go, well and truly open. So let's get this little motherfucker gutted, see what we got inside. So that Phil Dixon pick made very light work of that lock. Awesome stuff. So get rid of the vice. Cool. So we've got the key, so we'll lock this back up. There we go. So let's get this sear clip off. And there we go, tailpiece off. Right. Well, fucking hell. So I'd imagine, if Sonic the Hedgehog decided to do a fat line of cocaine and then gut a lock, I'm pretty sure that's what it would have looked like. So I found a factory defect whilst gutting this lock, so I thought, fuck it, I'll speed the motherfucker up. That way I can spend a little bit more time showing you this cool defect. So we'll have a little look at the pins first, and then I'll explain exactly what's gone wrong with this lock. So if we have a look from 1 through to 5, we've got bevels, tapers... Only little, not too excessive, but this on each key pin, one through to five. That combined with this uh, counter milling that we've got on the core here is a nice little additional security measure. When we come down to the drivers, if we have a look in two and number four, we've got two spools. One, three and five, of course, are standard. So some of you may have noticed we didn't get any counter rotation whatsoever. Uh, all we had to do was touch number four and it was set, which doesn't really make sense because this key pin here isn't too long. So that got me thinking. So I had a little look around and look what I found. So if we have a look down here, chamber number four, it hasn't been drilled correctly. We've got a bit of the ward in that hasn't been drilled. Can you see that there? I'll spin it around so we can see it from the other side. So what this means is, well actually I'll flip the camera around, I'll show you exactly what it means. But very unusual defect. So to show the effects of this defect, what we're going to do, we're going to take key pin number four and plonk it into chamber four. As we can see, that's sitting real high up. That's very close to the shear line. When we take a spool pin, plonk it on top there. As we can see, that just about sits there. That spool's about as effective as a motherfucking fart in a hurricane, guys. That's doing fuck all. It's a real shame that this uh, lock has slipped through quality control. Because if we take this out, 
we'll put it into another chamber, we'll put it into three, we know that one's been drilled correctly. As you can see, that's gone all the way down into there. When we put the spool on top, look at that, that would have been fully interactive. So that's how chamber four should have been. So shame this has slipped through, as I said, because it's effectively turned it from having two security driver pins to only having one driver pin. It's almost turned the fucking thing into a four pin lock. That being said, the black gem from Phil Dixon still made incredibly light work of this lock. It was a pleasure to use, really comfortable. I really like the profile. It's really good for picking off the ledge, picking off the warden. You get underneath the pins nicely. Beautiful pick. So once again, Phil, my friend, thank you so much. Great work. So thank you for watching this, guys. Please like. Please subscribe and I'll see you all soon.